goal here today is to um, to kind of just give you a very high, high level overview. Um, it can be very inundating and a lot of people don't realize that there's other alternatives other than some of the off the, off the shelf solutions that are um, um, in the pharmacy today, as well as sometimes when your doctor recommends something, there's other solutions that you could try before you start using medication. And the reason why I say that is, is because sometimes so many things affect, like for instance, if you take a lot of Advil for inflammation, a lot of times what'll happen is it'll affect your kidneys. So um, my really goal here is, is to make sure that you realize that there's other opportunities to be able to use other items and maybe you don't have to use that. You can try another solution before you get to that point. Um, I, um, I, I know Nancy very well, and I just met Dawn. Um, Nancy and I have known each other since, I think, 1979, in fact. Um, I've been in technology for ages. I just left technology last September. Um, I, uh, I started looking at essential oils in 2011. I actually went to a spa, and they had this... Um, this I, little, like, it's a diffuser, but at the time I didn't know what it was. Um, it was something that was putting, you know, moisture in the air. It reminded me of a humidifier and it smelled really good. And I was like, well, what is that? I want to buy that because I wanted to replace a candle in my house. And then what I did was I bought that and then I couldn't find that um, bottle of oil that I liked. At that time it was called Serenity. Um, any place and then I looked into the company and then I, I kind of as time went on I started to realize that there's essential oils that you buy in the, in the store many of them that you used to be able to buy like a diffuser or like those little rings that you used to put on um, um, your um, light bulbs on your lamps and you'd put them you'd fill out the oil in there and it smell really good it had vanilla and stuff like that well those were all like you know, filler stuff, they weren't medicine-y type of things that were basically something that would help heal you. But then I realized it was kind of the same thing. So as time went on, I started really looking into it. Um, I started um, as a hobby, basically looking into it for me, for health and for my husband. And in, in um, I think it was like in 2014 or 15, I don't know if you guys know um, Dr. Josh Axe. Um, he's in your area. Um, he's in Tennessee and he's very well known. He created the Essential Oil Institute and he had um, a school. And so I joined the school and I went to school to learn all the medical part of it behind it so that I could understand more and more about it. And um, it got more interesting to me. And then after I finished that and I received my certification from him for, from um, Essential Oil Coach, I went on and I, um, worked with the um, American Association of Drugless Practitioners. And um, I ended up getting my, um, my um, license to do holistic health coaching. And then I went further and I went through NAHA, which is the National um, um, Association of Holistic Aromatherapy, um, where they really give you a lot of information and that's probably naha.org that you would wanna check, um, check out for yourselves. The nice thing about that is they're not specific on oils. They're on plants and oils. So you see a lot of things take place for plants that the seed or the leaf or something turns into what we're seeing here today that could make a big difference for yourself. So moving forward, um, I'll go on here and uh, talk a little bit about it. Um, these are natural compounds. They're found in roots, bark, seeds, flowers, um, they're, they're a plant and they're distilled in conditions and an environment that is in their sourcing area. Um, plants are really important to us um, a long, long time ago. Um, you, you may have known, even in the Bible and all that, people talk about um, the different uses of essential oils. And so, you know, aspirin today didn't come from from anything that we just recreated, aspirin started from way back then. So essential oils are used for aromatherapy, which is what most of us know about it. Some essential oils are used for food preparation. There's about 18 to 20 different oils that you can use 
um, for, um, for cooking. I use basil, celery seed, peppermint, um, grapefruit, oil. There's all kinds of oils that you can use for cooking. They're also for healthcare practices. There's some hospitals today that are diffusing um, in, a, in not a water solution diffuser, but more of a diffuser that is vibrated to where they will um, put lemon or grapefruit or stuff like that out um, into their area. And it, and it has been known to calm people in the hospital, as well as some hospitals are um, using, it, using lavender and some of the other um, solutions on patients today to help. It may not cure, but it's to help. It's to help as a solution. Um, it's to help your immunity. It's to help help you just have a little more relief. And of course, we see a lot of stuff in personal care and beauty treatments. And you got to be really careful because the stuff that you spray on logo and it has lavender in it. It's not like la real lavender in it. And that's where you end up with allergies, especially like when you have perfumes that you use and stuff like that. Um, you have to be really careful. So you want to use as, as pure as possible. Um, some of the reasons to use essential oils are they're natural and safe. Um, they're, the one thing I would have to say, they're 50 to 70 times more powerful than herbs. Um, Detours and some and a couple other companies um, out there, they're certified pure therapeutic grade oils. So you really need to make sure that you're looking at that. So I would say there's Young Living, there's Dutera. There, I don't know some of the other ones. I would really check if you're, if you're looking, um, looking at these companies. I would um, just go and look at the bottles when you purchase them. Um, I chose Dutera um, looking at it because they gave me a lot of information and they did a lot of training and they sourced to help people in other countries that are really sourcing the, like Frankenstein sense, it's grown in a specific area and they're helping that, those people that are growing that. And I know that when I have a bottle of oil, when I have a bottle of oil, there's a number on the back, the bottom of it. I can go source to you, I can put in that number and that number tells me where it came from. So that's really critical to me because I want to know where it is because a lot of oils have a lot of fillers in it and these don't have any fillers in it. So these bottles, for instance, have 250 to 275 drops, the 15 milliliter um, bottles do. You don't need a lot of it. You may only need one drop. That may last you a long time. And for example, I, I had put this here just to show you guys. It takes three pounds of lavender to do a, a 15 milliliter bottle of, wow. uh, of oil. Mm -hmm. It takes 105 pounds of roses, the roses, the, the, the petals, to do a five milliliter bottle of um, rose. So if you see like a bottle of oil be really expensive and yet another oil is very, very um, cheap, it's usually because it takes a lot more of them to make that bottle. Um, and um, lemons is another one. Um, I use lemon for a lot of things here, but the it's, the it's the rinds and the oil, it's not the lemon juice. So it takes 50 lemons in order to do a 50 milliliter um, bottle of um, lemon. And I think the bottles of lemon here are like $10. So it kind of gives you an idea. If you have 250 to 275 drops in there, you, to me, like I clean with it and I diffuse with it and I do a lot of other things with it. Um, you're, you're, getting a, a, it it's, you're getting a good value for your money. Um, one of the things that um, I noticed when I was looking, and, and that's why I was looking for the certified pure therapeutic grade and not something that was just off the shelf, is that if you look at this, this is the percentage, and there's not there's not a lot. A lot of them are thera a lot of them are therapeutic food synthetic. They have a lot of fillers in it. Um, for instance, frankincense is sourced in Oman and Somalia, for example, and it supports your healthy cellular function. A lot of people use frankincense, like I put it in a, uh, like a roller ball um, with coconut, fractionated coconut oil and frankincense, and I actually use it for my skin. 
And um, it's also a mood balance. And a lot of people use uh, frankincense, for example, for inflammation and for a, a lot of other um, a lot of other uses. That is just an example of one of the oils that would be more pure, would be pure. Yeah, something you wouldn't normally find on the shelf probably either. Or you might find it for the holidays, like with myrrh and frankincense or in a candle or something, but it's not going to be pure. If I'm going too fast, you guys, tell me, because I'll go on and on and on. And if there, you have a question, feel free to ask me, and I hope I have the answer. Um, one of the things that we're doing in our house right now is we're trying to make sure we keep our immunity up. That's the big thing. Because if you can keep your immunity up and eat right and you can take, take your vitamins if you um, should take vitamins, I recommend um, definitely take at least some type of vitamin. And um, if you can use a lot of different protocols, you can keep yourself from at least getting to the point where you have to go to the doctors. Because you know, once you go to the doctors, you usually aren't feeling very well at that point. And then once again, you're gonna end up getting antibiotics and antibiotics kills your gut. It takes two years for your gut to reclaim and go back. People don't realize that. It's not something where the antibiotic, the antibiotic takes place it, it fixes you and then say three months from now you go on antibiotics again, it's not gonna work the same. And that's when a lot of people say these aren't working. Well, that's why. You can't continue to use them. You have to use some other things. So hopefully this can, can um, help you guys. It's more effective in my view than some of the medications. And I'll give you some examples of some things that have happened to me and, and hopefully that will um, kind of enlighten you a little bit. It does can combat, essential oils do combat um, bacteria and also the duplications of viruses on the inside. And um, they, the one thing that a lot of people like, and you'll see a lot of sports people use like some of the essential oils, um, maybe like Deep Blue, and we'll talk about that in a minute, and a few other the products is because there's no side effects, but also when they get drug tested, there's no drugs inside in them. So they're able to, um, you know, to use something that's going to help them that's holistic, but it's not medication. And um, the thing here is there's some essential oils that you might want to put on the tip of your tongue, and it'll get to you within 22 seconds, okay? So if I were to use peppermint, for example, because I'm stuffed up, I'm congested, I could put it on the tip of my tongue, and in 22 seconds, it's reached my brain and it has helped clear me out. I will tell you that I have not had a headache in five or six years. And if I get a headache or even start to feel like I'm getting a headache, I'll rub um, peppermint on the top of my forehead with a little bit of fractionated coconut oil. And the only reason why I say that is because fractionated coconut oil kind of blends a little better and it's a little bit easier to roll on. You don't have to use that. You can use it straight, but that's what I do. Or I'll put a, a touch of it in my mouth and it opens up everything. It clears me up. Um, and, and I would have to say that's one of them that, that I really like. And um, that's a good example of it going to your brain. If you, um, if you were to roll this on the bottom of your feet, and I've done this before, say you rolled rolled peppermint on the bottom of your feet because there are rollerball versions like here where this on guard product is where it's mixed with fractionated coconut oil and the product the essential oil what will happen is it'll get through your bloodstream in two minutes but what's really funny is i put peppermint on the bottom of my feet especially if i'm going through, you know, like I, I've pretty much been through the change now, but you go through the sweating, you're hot and everything. I put it underneath my feet, underneath the bottom of my feet. I can taste the peppermint in my mouth. It's so weird. It's so weird. So it goes through and it does go through your blood bloodstream. Terry, um, the things that are in the beadlets, like the peppermint in the beadlet, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that 22 seconds also? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. Anything that you put in your mouth. I don't recommend really putting a, a lot of essential, uh, essential oils in your mouth. I'm not a big like, okay, you need to, to, to um, 
put this in, in your mouth and you need to take it. I, I think there's specific oils and you need to leave it at that because there's a lot of oils that are hot oils, meaning oregano, and you have to be very careful with that oil. Um, oregano, for example, and I don't think I use that as an example, it's so hot that I have this little tiny, little um, tiny wart on my finger and I put it on there for three days and it, it went away completely went away. Um, so I just, you have to be very careful and understand the application and what to use. And once you do that, you're okay. You just don't want to do anything that's going to hurt you um, because they are so strong. Um, uh, I will have to tell you, and I use, I want to use this as an example for my ear. I say it's definitely, if you can use essential oils, it's definitely a lot cheaper than traditional medication. Not all of us can go to the doctors all the time. We have co-pays. Not everybody has doctors to be able to go to. Not everybody has medical care. Um, I, for years, had um, an ear that would clog up all the time. I traveled a lot. Um, in, in my work that I had before, and I had a lot of problems where they'd be clogged up, they'd be fluid in my ears. I went to the doctors constantly, and they either gave me steroids for my sinuses, or they would give me some type of allergy medication, and all it did was dry me up, and it was creating high blood pressure for me. And I was like, I have to get off of this. And I tried Sudafed, I was on Sudafed all the time, and um, it, it would do it for a little bit, then it would go away. Finally, as I looked into this, I found, of all things, um, looking into all, the, all of the essential oils, basil. Basil oil, I used it, I did it on the back of my ear, just a little tip of it. I used it a couple days, and I have never had any fluid in my ears. I have no allergies. I use no sinus stuff anymore. Um, and that's what really made me become a true believer. And now Mark, my husband, is the same way. In fact, I had made a roller bottle version for him, so it would be a lot easier than just putting it on you, dropping it. You know, you have, have this, bait. I know this is small, but dropping this on you and putting it on here and doing that. I made a roller bottle version so he could just roll it behind his ear, and he'll go, I smell like basil. He'll put it all over him, but he says it really works for him, and it clears the clears things up. So that's kind of a good example. A lot of people have um, kids that have ear infections a lot, especially from swimming and all. And one thing that a lot of people have told me is rub two drops of lavender and two drops of tea tree or melaleuca, it's the same thing, around your ear, and you should not have a problem. It opens up the kid's ear. And that's a much cheaper solution at 64 cents for a couple drops than it is to go and get the stuff that's off the shelf at the pharmacy or go later on to the doctor. Immunity, because I need to stay compliant. And I do have immunity. Um, I have immunity brochure on the COVID stuff. If um, if you wish to have that, I think Nancy, you may have that information. I may have passed that on to you um, because the FDA would come down hard on Duterte as well as any other uh, holistic health coach because we're not doctors. So um, one thing that you, you have to understand is I and I will say immunity, immunity, immunity. Do yourself a favor. And I, antibiotics are not going to penetrate the cell membrane of a virus. But if you can catch things fast enough or you use protocols, you will help yourself to where essential oils will because they're able to replicate that and go after it. It's not a cure-all, it's a preventative. It should help you immunity-wise. I have some protocols here. I may have put some things in here. I have some other things that I can pass on, but I, like I said, I have to be very careful with that. I do have um, classes um, that I do either on Facebook periodically where people can go as a pace as they can go. 
I do go specifically into private training one-on-ones as well as I do other presentations to some of a, a more of a closed group and I'd be more than happy to just focus on one but I just kind of want to give you guys an, an idea about this it really can help it's it's not um, something that um, I wouldn't I would I we practice this right now we've been very fortunate and hopefully it stays that way I'm not saying it's the the end all but you know anything that'll help is perfect so I'm gonna give you some examples we talked about peppermint um, here's some of the key properties of peppermint look at antiseptic expectorant and anti-inflammatory um, I can tell you that I've put um, a couple essential oils together before and using honey and we've made our own cough syrup and there's no chemicals in it there's no sugar in it and, and um, I have those recipes I'd be more than happy to pass them on to anybody that that that's interested in them um, it's made a difference to us um, because we're not paying number one uh, $24 for a bottle of of um, specific type of cough syrup um, or looking at for some type of cough syrup that would be for kids um, exact, exactly but I it's with lemon and peppermint and a few other things in it and it really has made a difference and that's what we use in our house I, I can't eat, I don't even remember when we've gone to buy um, cough syrup anymore um, so lavender is one thing and I, I know that I know Nancy's a big fan of lavender um, lavender oil is calming and is soothing, and if you're stressed, lavender is really a great go-to. I don't like lavender. I don't like the smell of it, but it does work. And um, the other day, Mark had a mosquito bite, and it was itching. He put a little bit of lavender essential oil on it. It stopped itching, and he's never talked about it since. So it really does work. So, Terry, on that, um, can you do, is it safe to put on... So was Mark's um, combined with a fractionated oil or did no, he use it straight? he put it straight. And so is it safe to put it straight on little kids? Yes, it is. Okay. It's straight. It's safe to put on little kids, only specific oils, because some of them are very hot. And um, I, I can make sure that I give you guys, like, um, for, the, for babies and for children, um, the the amount like if you don't need it to mix it with fractionated coconut oil i have to tell you i would just do a roller ball nancy you're very familiar with it i would take like 15 drops of that lavender oil and then i would top it off with um coconut the fractionated coconut oil and then let, let them well they're they're your, your grandkids are really young but let them roll it on there because then it's diluted and it's and it, you don't have to worry about it but it'll take care of it but you can use it directly on a kid. That's no problem. Okay. How do you know when to use it directly or, or not? How do you know which, you know, which times to do that? Well, I would say if, if um, it, it's really a matter of convenience. I like to have it in a roller ball because I don't get it on my hands. I'm just putting it directly in the, in the area. And also, I always look at it as less is more. So if it's for topically, you can use a fractionated coconut oil um, with any of the essential oils because you're putting it on your body. You're not diffusing it or you're not putting it in your mouth, ingesting it. So a lot of times I say, make a roller ball. You know, if, if you can, if you can't, then use it directly. Um, but the choice is usually um, for a child, for the parent, but I would say like lavender is safe. I wouldn't put wild orange or oregano or any of the hotter oils, citrus type oils on a child without them being diluted. Um, and I have a bro, just a one page brochure on that. That should help if that's, if you guys are interested in that. Um, definitely, um, you have to be careful with kids. Does that, did that answer your question? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so um, wild orange. Wild orange is an anti-inflammatory. I like to um, diffuse that, it smells really good. And um, it's also an antidepressant as well. 
I put a couple of drops in my water um, every day when either lemon or wild orange, sometimes peppermint, sometimes I've even put lavender in there. Um, I, I have had kidney stone operations twice now. So my whole thing is drink water and because that's where my problem has been. So I try to kind of do do different things to try and interest me in drinking more water than just plain water. So um, wild oranges, it smells really, really good. It smells just like an orange. Uh, I, I mean, it's like having a bunch of oranges or walking through an orange um, tree um, um, area, but it, it really, really is good. And the, I'm trying to give you guys kind of like some of the top main ones because a lot of times there's a lot of blends, which are really great. But if you have the top ones, you can do your own blends or, or you can get lazy like I am and then I buy the blends because it's a lot easier. Um, tea tree oil, tea tree oil or melaleuca, for example, that's the best first aid for skin. If you have um, blemishes or rashes, um, definitely, especially acne for kids, definitely is well worth using, using that um, for cleansing. Um, I've used it for um, my fingernails and for my toenails for like, you know how they get yellow sometimes, uh, especially if you've used a lot of nail polish or something like that or you've been out gardening. So I've used that and I've applied on it. Um, I've applied using that. I've also used tea tree, a drop in um, a glass of um, water. My dentist has recommended that, um, especially when you're having dental work done and all because it, um, it just, it takes care of everything in your mouth. And um, it, it's, it's really, really good medicine wise. It helps heal everything. Um, don't swallow it. Uh, but um, that is a recommendation. I keep a bottle of this in my house all the time. We go through it just for that. I, some people like the smell of it. Um, it's, it's okay to me. Um, I've used it also for um, when I have flowers. Instead of putting in that packet that they give you and the, with the flowers that's like aspirin or whatever, I put a drop of um, tea tree in the water and it makes my flowers stay longer. Wow. Um, now, I really like, I'm a big fan of lemon, and I did a whole presentation on lemon for one of our other groups um, in doTERRA. Um, I would have to say, if you have sore throats, you have coughing, you have anything, try lemon, try some, a little drop of lemon in your water, um, use a little honey with the lemon. Um, for $10, you cannot go wrong. Um, it is it is the greatest thing for fighting off infections, and it smells really good. But it is once again a um, strong oil where you, if you apply it on your skin, it may burn a little bit. You might be sensitive. So if you were going to put it on your skin, um, which I don't see where you would, but if you did, you would make sure you want to put a little bit of um, fractionated coconut oil on it with it mixing with it other or even avocado oil or olive oil it doesn't have to be fractionated coconut oil it could be um, grapeseed oil i'm just you know, i'm a big fan of fractionated coconut oil because it soaks in your skin right away it doesn't leave any greasy mess and um and it's it's healthy for you why would you use that rather than just a regular lemon you know why would you use the oil instead of a regular lemon um, it, this has got, you're using the rind of the lemon and the lemon juice doesn't have the same components that is in the lemon rind when it's pressed and um, the oil's taken out of it. Um, so you, this is the, the lemon rind part is the part that's antibacterial and it fights all the other um, things that you would um, have for infection where the, the lemon isn't going to do that. The juice isn't going to do that. Okay, so I have a question for you guys. And if you guys can answer this, I will send you a bottle of lavender oil. Do you guys know the three ways that you can use essential oils? The three ways? The three ways. Three different ways. Ingesting, topical, and aromatherapy. Boom. Then, yep, yeah, there you go. 
She's, well, she's, you win, she's you win the bottle of lavender. <laughs> well, no, I didn't mean, I was like, who was the, one of the three reasons to use essential oils. Okay, well, we each should have given one reason. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll tell you what, because there's only, there's only four of us on here, and I know that um, other people will see this later. I will, Nancy, I will send you something, definitely. But, but Dawn, I'll send you a bottle of lavender for yourself and for Karen. Oh, thank you so much. Karen. You're welcome. Woohoo! Woohoo! Hey, just for being Karen, just for being here today. Okay? Right. No, um, just because she has two A's. <laughs> because she's got two A's. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So we're going to go a little bit over the aromatic use. Okay, so the thing is, I'm not going to get into the technical part where it's the nerve sends the message to your brain and all of that. But the bottom line is, you can put it on your hands and breathe through it. There's this essential oil called Breathe that um, doTERRA has that has peppermint, lavender, um, there's a couple other oils in there and it is... It, it prevents people from snoring, number one. I don't know if you have that problem or not, but in my house, we do. I and, didn't know it worked like that. Yes, and you can diffuse it, okay? Um, I, I'll tell you what I do, and because I'm kind of lazy. So if I have it here. I buy the rollerball version of the Dutira's, um, do tears, um, breathe. It's got the little ball here because what I do is I apply it here, yeah, I apply good. it here, and I'll apply, I'll apply it here. It smells really good and it opens up my sinuses. Carrie, yeah. do me but, a favor because mm -hmm. Nancy's um, volume is on. We didn't see where you we we saw under the nose, but wait a minute, let's go back to where you're the on top of my head. Okay, yeah, and then on my chest. Okay. But you can put it on your feet. You can put it anywhere. This is what I do. But you don't want to diffuse, I'll make sure you can see this, anything that has the fractionated coconut oil, you want to diffuse the pure oil, okay? Because you don't want the fractionated coconut oil to be diffusing, because it's not going to help your diffuser either. Um, but being lazy and portable and need it to go this is my go-to and I keep it I keep it on my counter because in the winter this stuff is priceless yeah. the, and I have to tell you there if you're using humidifiers essential oil shouldn't be in a humidifier unless it tells you it can use it there are some out there um, and I have one that I bought off of, off of Amazon that will allow you to use essential oil in it. And just recently, doTERRA finally came up with one um, that I just purchased and I've been playing with it to see how, how it goes. Because I'm a big fan of, I don't like noise when I go to bed. I like quiet. It, it can't even be a whisper of noise, air, of the, of the mist. I don't like it. So I've been testing that and it seems to be working and I'm able to put it directly into the humidifier, but only if it tells you it can. Otherwise it would ruin the parts to your humidifier. So you have to be careful. So how do we make, how do we use this um, breathe for stopping the snoring? Um, what you do is you put at least five to six drops in your, um, your um, diffuser. And you can run that in your bedroom at nighttime. Run it for about an hour and it should help you. Now, I, I made Mark a, a, a version of that, a little stronger than what I can buy off, off of doTERRA to give him. Now, he, he has his like three or four go-to and now he just <laughs> makes a big difference. It really makes a big difference for my life. <laughs> well. Okay, so we're going to just talk just a little bit about it again. It, it also cleans the air, you guys. So that, that's one thing. It cleans the air. Most of these humidifiers, you know, they're only really for a room. Um, I have a couple of them throughout my house. Um, but um, it also will support breathing. A lot of people have um, sleep 
problems. And they'll use lavender in their um, diffuser and it helps them. There's another product called Serenity that has a couple other um, essential oils in there along with lavender. That's for more extreme people that have a, a hard time sleeping. And then there's another higher level one called adaptive for people that really have um, a lot of sleep issues where we have a program for that and people will diffuse that um, at nighttime to help them. I have only done the lavender, but I'm not, a, like I said, I'm not a big lavender person, but I do like the breathe. Um, I, it helps us in our house and I, and it helps us not be congested on top of that. So that, that kind of makes a big difference. We're kind of getting two things in one. Okay. So let me go to the next one. So there's other ways for application ideas. And this, I just want to give you guys some ideas. First of all, you can spritz your stuff, your essential oils on your clothing. Like with lavender, you can take a couple drops, put it in a bottle, a spray bottle, and you can put water in it and you can spray it in your hat, you know, on your clothing, you can spray it in your house. You don't need to buy um, these air fresheners that you get in the store. You can use that instead. I do this here myself. I put two or three drops of the oil on the floor of my shower. I used eucalyptus on the bottom of my shower. It smells really good. Um, it's, it helps you breathe really well on top of that. And um, it's, it's kind of like having a spa, but you're not in a spa. So I'll use eucalyptus. Um, I also have applied um, oil to a cotton ball in the air vents of, of my car vehicle, but I've also done it in my house. So those filters you have in your house, mm -hmm. um, you can put a, a, you can either spray them with a little bit of the oil, like when you make a spray, or you could just put a couple of cotton balls on there. I've also put cotton balls with lavender or peppermint in them. I have rabbit problems here and they don't like it. So I've had, to, I've gone out and I put them like in plant areas and we, well, I've had lizard problems because we live in the desert and the lizards want to create a home where they don't need to create a home. So I'll put that in the hole and they go away. So, so that's, that's kind of the one thing. And of course, placing a drop of oil on your, on your um, hand, um, rubbing them together and cupping them. So if you had breathe or peppermint, you could rub it on there, breathe, and that's a good way to inhale it if you don't have a diffuser. Or you can drop a, a, a drop of it on a, a dryer sheet. I'm not a big fan of dryer sheets. I use wool balls. Um, you can get them in the stores. You can get them any place. You could put it on, um, on a, a rag, really, and a cloth and put it in your dryer. Um, but put a couple um, drops of lavender oil or lemon or some of the oils that you like, and you can use that as your, um, um, your static guard for your, for your clothes. Do you have a list of oils for the different things that you were talking about? Like, you know, you used a eucalyptus for the shower, then you're using this for the, you know, the snakes or whatever. You have a list of which ones go with what? I do. And you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a PDF booklet over to you guys today. And, um, and Karen, I, I mean, Dawn, you can, um, um, send it out to everybody. Absolutely. Uh, also, there's, you guys, there's a, um, Oil Magic does this wonderful book um, that I really like. Let's see if I can find it. Oil Magic does, I'll try to put it up here a little bit, does this really book on all the protocols and everything. They just released one that's free if you sign on and it's just an electronic version. But I really like it because if, if your kid has head lice, you can put head lice in there and it will give you the protocol what you need. And that's what you want. It's kind of like reminds me of the medical books that we used to have when we were growing up. You open it up. I've got, I've got congestion. What do I do? And, and that's really good. And I'll make sure that I put Dawn, I think what I'll do is I'll just send you an email. I won't put it on the chat. 
And then, then anybody that wants it can sign up. It's free. I signed up for it free, but I buy, I buy their books because they're the easiest books. And when someone becomes a member um, with, with um, the groups that I'm in, I usually will send them a book because I don't want oils to sit on the shelf after you purchase them. It's kind of crazy to do that. Otherwise, it's not going to help you. Um, so I hope that helps you, Karen. Um, and I will send you, I will send also a couple PDF files that have, have like specific protocols, like for stress, for sleep, for breathing, stuff like that. Just the, the minor things that, that we have all issues with during, during the week. Thank you. Thank you. Um, here is for top, for top, oops, for topical use. You have to be really careful with topical. And the only reason why I say that is because some oils are really hot oils, like I was talking about a little bit ago, like oregano or melaleuca tea tree oil or wild orange. And so you need to mix them with a carrier oil if you're not diffusing them, if you're going to put them on your body, um, because they could burn. And some are photosynthesis. There's a big list of about 10 of them. So you wouldn't want to put them on. You wouldn't want to put wild orange on you and then go out in the sun because your, your skin may be sensitive enough to blister. That's how potent they are. So um, I, I recommend that definitely use a carrier oil. Carrier oil. I'm, like I said, I'm a big fan of fractionated coconut oil. Deuterra makes a great fractionated coconut oil. So does M MC, what is it? Um, on, in Amazon, there's an MCT. MCT is the, um, the um, name of the oil, fractionated coconut oil. And they make some good um, coconut oil as well. It doesn't smell. You can't smell it at all. So if you put it on you, it's not gonna smell like a coconut. Um, it's um, the MCT version you can put in your mouth. This version, Deuterra's version, you can't put it in your mouth. I wouldn't recommend putting that in your mouth at all. You don't want to ingest it. So there's different types of coconut oil. Karen, um, so is, is this, when you said you use it on your face for a moisturizer, you use frankincense in this, in the oil? Mm -hmm. so how much frankincense do you mix with um, it? I usually will just drop a drop on my hand and then I will just drop a little bit of the coconut oil on, and then I will put it on my face. I don't even make them on today, sorry guys. This gives, kind of gives you an idea. And I just use that, I use that every day. I use it in the morning and the night. I don't use all the creams that are out there anymore because there's a lot of chemicals in them. And yeah. I found this was a lot cheaper, <laughs> a whole lot cheaper in the end. Um, Deuterra makes a, a version that's a roller, roller ball version that has the oil in it. And once in a while during the year, because frankincense is pretty expensive, they'll have a special where you'll be able to get one free. And then I usually try to grab it as fast as I can. But if you buy the bottle, the pure oil, you know, you got a lot of drops in it. So you can make up your own or you could just do it by hand like I, like I do. Now, we were talking about um, babies, and I'm going to give you an example. But... Um, I really like the idea of when you, especially when you have kids, it's better to apply it on the bottom of their feet. Cause you know, kids, kids will put their fingers in their mouth, you know, they get all over. It's, it's just crazy. If it's on the bottom of the feet, it, it really happens pretty quickly. Um, a lot of people um, use On Guard, which um, has cinnamon and clove and wild orange and a lot of other immunity um, oils, they use that in a rollerball version or they make their own up with the fractionated coconut oil for immunity for their kids, especially with kids when it comes to colds, you know, they're in daycare, they're with a lot of kids right now, you know how it is. So a lot of people do that and, and, and uh, they apply almost everything pretty well topically on the, on the bottom of the feet for kids. Um, unless, of course, it's like a mosquito bite or something like that you were talking about, Nancy, or um, say they have a cold or something like that. But, but usually that's what, what you would do. Um, I've, I have this reflexology area um, that I've taught before, one for adults and one for kids. This kind of gives you an idea for kids um, what you would do. 
I have um, a brochure on this if you wish to have that. And it kind of gives you an idea, especially for, for kids on where you would want to apply it. What is fractionated coconut oil? Is that the same as the, uh, the cooking coconut oil? No, it isn't. It's processed differently. So if you went to the store and you got the coconut oil that's in those jars and it's white, right. that'll smell like coconut oil. It'll smell like coconuts, okay? But this is fractionated, so they've taken the smell out. They've refined it differently. So it's like, it's like putting an oil that has no smell on you, but it's not greasy. It's as thin as baby oil or thinner, but it doesn't have a smell and it doesn't have that leftover film on you. It soaks right in your skin. So you get that through uh, doTERRA or? You can get it through doTERRA mm -hmm. or you could go to Amazon and Amazon has a version of it. Look for MCT and um, you can get it through them. I've used both. I like Duterra's. Maybe it's because I'm just used to it and I like it better. But the MCT, the nice thing about the MCT is you can ingest that oil where you can't this. The MCT oil that's on Amazon, people use that for smoothies and for a lot of other things. People use it for oil pulling. If you, for like, for your dental and everything, if you want to keep your mouth healthy, you could use a drop of um, one of the essential oils as well as a little bit of the um, MCT oil. Put it in your mouth and just um, swish it around um, in the morning or in the evening. And it really keeps the plaque off. It does, and I will tell you, I just moved here a year ago and I was looking for a dentist. And I had a holistic dentist in Annapolis, and I was really like, I'm going to get a holistic dentist. Well, that isn't very simple. Most places don't have them. And I finally had to go and get my teeth cleaned. I'm like, it's been a year, and I always go twice a year. I, I oil pull every day, just a little bit of swishing. I went to the dentist. I had no plaque. They had nothing. They're like, there's nothing to clean. It really makes a big difference. So if you're a smoker, you know, you're somebody that, you know, eats a lot of, a lot of stuff that kind of, you know, gets kind of on your teeth a lot. Uh, if you don't water, you know, use the water pick um, just for hygiene or any of that. I'm trying to use different examples here, you guys, but I will tell you, it really does work. And I am a good example of it. Now, I'm going to tell you another thing. People don't think about this. It's not just for babies. And it's not for adults. It can also be for pets. It can be for rabbits, it can be birds, cats, dogs. Um, I, I have up here outdoor blend oil because there is an essential oil that can really help um, for pets. One is cedar wood. It's really good for um, putting on your pet's collar. I have some do-it-yourself recipes that I have in a flyer for you guys that I'll give you. Instead of buying those tick things that you use for your dogs, use that. You could put it on a scarf and put it around their neck. You can make your own. Um, it, it is really good. There's an outdoor blend called Terra Shield that is like DEET out in the store that, uh, that we use. Um, and it's for all of us, you know, and it's in a spray bottle or an essential oil bottle straight. Mm -hmm. And you can put that on your pets as well, or you can put it on yourself as well. It protects you from getting mosquitoes on you and stuff like that. Or, or um, when you're going, I guess the Lyme disease, disease, for example, you have to worry about ticks. This is a good way. Um, I, we carry that instead of DEET because there's no chemicals in it. Um, it actually, let's see. It actually comes in a bottle like this, a spray bottle but it also comes in a, a 15 milliliter bottle. You can make your own or you can buy it separately. I say, you know what, buy the essential oil, 15 milliliter, put some water in it um, with it, put as much as you feel comfortable with. We put usually 
about 10 or 15 drops because it's pretty strong. And we use that to spray to keep mosquitoes and pests off, off of us instead of buying DEET. Because DEET is pretty strong and it's got a lot of chemicals and you really don't want to put them on, that on your pet and you don't want to put it on your kids. Terry, what about for um, dogs' bad breath? Um, peppermint <laughs> is good for dogs' bad breath. And lavender is good for calming the dog. You can use lavender on a dog. But peppermint is really good. And actually, the dogs like that. You know those peppermint beads you have? You could give your, yeah. your dog one of them and see how they, um, they are with them. They should like it, really, because it bursts and dissolves really quickly. And if we were going to spray with it, then we'd have to use that MCT oil. Right. Or pepper. if you're going to spray it in their mouth, right. I would just get a, a little spray bottle and put some water in it and put like one drop, one drop, because peppermint is very strong. And then you can spray it in their mouth. Okay. Have you had any side effects? I mean, you, you're trying different things and you add different things. Have you had any side effects saying, oh, maybe I better not use this oil for this or anything like that? Um, I would have to say that I can't diffuse eucalyptus and frankincense together. Some people can because it gives me, it, I, it gives me too much energy and I couldn't sleep. So I had to be really careful and that's with me. Some people don't. So, cause I tend to mix different, I don't, I'll diffuse to make a, an apple pie smell in the house. So I'll put like four different drops of different oils to make that. But I've learned that for eucalyptus and frankincense, uh -uh, they're not a good mixture for me. It makes me not sleep all night long. It's like having coffee. So I can't do that. Okay, so here's a good example of topical. Um, I know, Nancy, you guys use the deep blue cream, okay? There's, a, there's a, a product called Deep Blue, and it has these oils in it, plus some other oils. But I wanted to give you an example of like, um, when you have knee, plant, knee pain or ankle pain, um, or um, sciatic nerve in your back or something like that, um, you can put together a couple oils with, um, with either, coconut solid oil, the coconut oil that you buy off, off the supermarket. Um, so it would look like um, Vicks basically, okay? A mixture of Vicks basically. Um, and apply that on, on your area and it should really help. Or you could buy um, deep blue rub, which is like a Bengay rub and it's white. I like the deep blue rub because it's not greasy and it has no chemicals in it, okay, instead of the Bengay. My husband has sciatica nerve in his back and he's had a lot of problems and we put a protocol together with the deep blue um, rub with marjoram oil and lemongrass oil. Marjoram because it's a, a, it's a skin number, it numbs your skin and lemongrass, and within 20 minutes, he doesn't have that problem. So he has learned that that is a good protocol for him. Um, I use deep blue, like on my knees, especially if I've been sitting for a long time and I'm not moving around because I'll have an ache. But I tend to use um, the um, rollerball blend. I make my own up. You can buy it. I make it. I don't like to use the cream as much because it's just, it doesn't, the rollerball blend doesn't have as much of a strong smell. So if I were going to go outside or go to the store or something, everybody's not going to think I smell like winter green. And people, and this, and some of this stuff is strong because I had clove on the other day because I had gone to the dentist and my gums were all kind of sore. So I was rinsing my mouth with clove. And then I went to go play bocce and this person said, you smell like clove. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I got, I made sure I had no clove on me. And she kept on saying, you smell like clove. <laughs> okay, so here's um, more of the topical information, your head, your neck. These are the areas that you would apply topically. 
There's certain areas you don't want to. Be very careful around your eyes. I have cleaned with lemon oil and um, even with water in it, and then I've gone and rubbed my eyes, and it's not a good feeling at all. Mm -hmm. If you do get something like that in there, take some fractionated coconut oil and rub it in on it, and it'll, you won't have any problems. Be careful putting it in your inner ears. I don't recommend that. Always put it on the outside of it. Um, and um, you have to be careful for what kind of oil you're using, like for if you have broken or damaged skin. Like I have a, I had a burn, it's not there now, but it's almost gone rather. I burned myself on the oven. So I used pure lavender oil on it. And within a day or two, it's almost gone. And I never even have this color. And I do that all the time. And so I'm getting used to, I just go and I grab the lavender oil and it's fine. But you wouldn't want to put like, you just have to be careful. Uh, I would put oregano on broken skin, but I would just not recommend it for everybody until you tested it to make sure that it was okay for yourself because everybody's body is different. Okay, so this is internal use. And for internal use, I have to say you have to be very careful. Um, specific oils, and you can have internally. The bottle should tell you on the back of an essential oil bottle, it should tell you whether you can do it ar aromatic, topical, or dietary. If it doesn't say dietary or it doesn't have anything like that, I would recommend not buying the oil because you don't know what's in it and you don't know what's gonna go in your body. You don't know, you don't wanna ingest it, definitely. There's a bottle here I got from somebody. It doesn't tell me anything. It just says that it's made in the USA from domestic and imported material, and it doesn't tell me I can do anything with it. So I'm like, okay, I could probably diffuse with it, but I don't wanna put it on my skin or I don't wanna ingest it. Yeah, but when you diffuse with it, I've noticed that on the oils that are not doTERRA, I have to uh -huh. use a lot more of that oil. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, one person told me that they had purchased a, a good reputable company, um, lavender um, oil, because they were having problems sleeping, but it didn't work for them. But the stuff that I had provided them did work for them. Now, I'm not saying, like I said before, this is the all go to everything's wonderful. It may work for you, it may not, but there is a big difference with, with their grade of oils and a few other reputable companies as well. So you can add essential oils to beverages like wild orange, lemon, um, turmeric, um, many of those different type of oils. And I have a reference for you, Karen, because I know you're going to ask me that, um, <laughs> to be able to provide you that. Some people even take um, veggie caps and they put the essential oil in there. And you go, well, why would you do that? Well, some people have really bad allergies. And so there's a product called Tri-Ease that um, doTERRA makes, and it has a drop of lemon, lavender, and peppermint in it. And what they do is they make their own instead of buy them. Now, I don't really, I, I guess it's probably cheaper to do it that way, but I'm not a big, like, fan of that because I'm like, am I going to get the drop right? But a lot of people do that, and they, they're, they're, they've done it for years, and it works for them. I buy the tri -ease tabs. They're just little essential. They're right here, in fact. It's like on guards here, but they're just like that. They're just a little tiny, tiny, like um, like um, the, your vitamin E's, the size of your vitamin E's, and they look like that. And they'll have the essential oil in it. And I take that from my allergies. I don't buy Sudafed or I don't buy that other stuff that's off the shelf. When I have allergy problems, I just buy them. Because I think they're like $20 and I get like 60 of them in there, if I recall. I'm not going to use them every day anyway. So I'm like, it's, to me, it's, it makes a lot, of, lot more sense. Now, the other way is um, putting it under your tongue directly. That gives you the most immediate if you have a, a problem. So like you could put frankincense under your tongue. I've done that before. Um, it has helped with inflammation or turmeric under your tongue. You can put any of them under your tongue that say that you can ingest them. Um, and then of course the supplements, um, 
the Tri-Ease was a good example. On Guard um, is doTERRA's um, immunity blend, and it has clove, cinnamon in it, a wild orange, and a couple other um, essential oils. That's in a supplement like a vitamin E would be. And then you can use them in your favorite recipes. If you use them in your favorite recipes, don't put them in at first like you would. Like say, for example, you have basil at home because you've used it for your ear and now you're gonna make um, pasta, you're gonna make tomato sauce and you don't have any seasoning at home. I've used basil in my sauce, but don't put it till the end because you don't need to put anything in until the very, very end because it's very strong. And I would only dip the toothpick in the bottle and then swirl the toothpick in my sauce. That's how strong the basil is. Right. If you pour a drop of that in your sauce, you're not going to like it. It's going to be too much basil. So Terry, mm -hmm. this has been absolutely incredible and I would like to keep going and going. <laughs> Unfortunately, I allotted an hour for today. Okay, okay, that's good. Okay, so um, what I'll do is we will, how about because it's an hour and it's at the end, um, how about if I leave you guys with this? Here's the most common used oils, okay? And it'll be on this video, but I'll send the presentation to you guys too. So you'll have it. Um, Duterra makes a lot of different products. The Deep Blue Rub, um, they're very, their number one seller is um, the vitamins, believe it or not, not the essential oils. And the last thing that I would leave you with, and I'll send this is, get on my Facebook groups, I have one that's public and one that's private. I give a lot of protocols, a lot of diffuser brand blends. If you're in my private group, I give you eBooks all the time. Um, it, I give you a lot of information. Sign up for my eBook um, and my newsletter that I send out once a month. Um, and um, hey, how's that for going fast? <laughs> <laughs>